What's going on guys? I'm Josh Orchard and welcome back to the shop. And today I owe you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, it's gonna be complicated, so let's get right into it. So just getting into things, clearly there is a change up front uh, and you can see that the fuselage has been stripped. As I said in the previous video, I did all that off camera, which uh, turned out to be a little bit interesting. I'm not going to go into the front right now, but the whole reason that I've got the landing gear on is because I had to cut a hole in the cowl for the main strut. So in order to fit that right i needed to have the main gear on the main gear was taken off completely stripped down including the uh balsa inserts here Stri stripped all the covering off sanded everything down and put several layers of primer on it because there was no primer on it before uh, anyway <laughs> it's been reassembled and uh and i also covered it with some oratex this is temporarily installed again because if you look at the profile, if I just had the nose gear on, it would have caused problems in the rear. So let's move on to the rear and talk about what's got to go on there. All right, so here's the deal. There is a lot of stuff going on here that is not good. Uh, number one is we have these sort of makeshift plates that don't really support much of anything and they're really flimsy and wobbly and they twist a lot. Um, so those those need to be redone. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether I wanna keep this piece of balsa sheeting here. It does sort of set the tail incidence, so I'm inclined not to and just sort of add in sheeting here where, see this overlaps and this is flush. So that's just completely not right. Um, and then up here, you can see that this balsa overlaps. So what? <laughs> uh, just really no thought going into that in terms of making it finished and flush. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, I've got, I've still got to peel off the covering here. And this, this, honest to goodness, I have not done this. This is as I was taking the covering off and I took off the struts and everything. This is as found, okay? There is literally nothing holding the entire assembly on. Uh, so that needs to be solved. So obviously I, what I need to do is I need to just go in and remove the pins for the rudder. And what I'll likely do is just cut this out with a razor saw. Uh, that way I can pull the whole tail assembly out and uh, not have to worry about the tail end of the airplane uh, because this spar here goes all the way down to the root of the tail. So if I just cut that out, then I can take this whole section out and work with it individually and figure out what structure I need to build and what needs to happen. So really, really complicated. It's the same on the other side. Um, so it's just a holy hot mess going on back there. You know, I got some doublers here because some wood had to be spliced, but they're, you know, they're not the same length. Got a piece of triangle stock here, no idea why. It's assembled with epoxy instead of CA. These ones are put together with what looks like a, a, a tight bond or wood glue. Um, <laughs> There were a number of things that were cracked. Uh, there was a crack here and this was not attached at all. Uh, I had to create the spacer here, which still isn't fully glued in because there was just these gaps and warps and stuff. I mean, there are just so many things that are little that need to be taken care of back here but I don't want to do that until I can get the whole fuselage ripped down and plant it on the table and get everything square and true. All of that said, <laughs> the, 
the uh, the cockpit area is more of better news. Uh, everything is really solid. Um, I did end up removing everything in the cockpit just because it wasn't very scale. It wasn't really well put together. Uh, and anything that I'm going to do is going to look much nicer. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is, so here's your last look. I do have the motor mounted. I've got the nose gear mounted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this cowl and go over what was done here because that was a ton of work. All right. That's a little bit better. And so we have the cowl off to the side. Uh, just also of note, I had to carve out all of these holes and uh, this hole here, I had to enlarge as I got bigger because I realized, so anyway, I'll, I'll get into it. So at first, uh, when I had the original cowl mocked up to this and mating right here against this ply former, I did some measuring uh, against the original firewall, which existed here and uh, took measurements. And I was like, OK, well, the motor is going to sit here. And so I started making sort of the, the firewall look and I was like, OK, well, I think the motor will fit just fine, but I'll only need like just a little bit of spacing, which will be not a big deal. Get some nylon bushings and just you know, use blind nuts and it'll be fine. Problem was, I didn't realize at the time that the new cowl is about one inch shorter than the old cowl. So there's a little bit more meat behind here on the old cowl. So that's why you saw earlier this space here. Um, so as I was fitting it originally, I was like, how come this cowl isn't fitting? How come it isn't fitting? So I ended up cutting this corner off and then putting a little cap on it with some balsa but just getting this box material stuff figured out was it was a many day process so i realized that i needed number one a new support because the old one here this was just completely soaked with fuel so uh, this side wasn't so bad, which gave me some hope, but then I started sanding this away and all of this green is just soaked into the wood and that's, that's fuel. So I knew that this had to go and I was worried about everything else, but what gave me hope was that this part that was in the firewall area was not green. So I uh, started sanding that back and turns out that it was completely fine. So I was like, okay. I'm going to ditch the little diagonal braces. So there used to be like these diagonal braces that were here that would support this. But, you know, it was obvious it was back here. Anyway, long story short, I was able to make a new firewall for the motor that would also support the bracket for the nose gear, as well as make an extension for a battery tray. And all of this is tied in using some uh, triangle stock and epoxy that goes into the location. This is exactly the same length as it was before. This is a double lamination of quarter inch aircraft grade ply, more aircraft grade ply, and all of that is epoxied up against the old firewall area, which was cut out. <sighs> then I ran into the issue. <laughs> of okay so if this is just uh epoxied in place uh what's it to stop from torquing and twisting so i knew that i needed some side ply plates that were gonna prevent any twisting from landing motion so sometimes this can twist a little bit like if you're putting a side load on this so i knew i needed to have some sort of plate that i wanted to screw in. i didn't want to epoxy it i wanted to screw it in and then i realized that that was in the wrong location because I put it up and I looked at where the strut was going to come through and it was going to come through like right here, which is a very, very wrong location looking at scale images of the airplane. So then I figured out that the cowl was too short and that's when I realized, okay, I need to extend my motor mount and that's when I went back to this mount as a, and abandoning these, these large bolts with a small extension. 
Anything larger than an inch, I just don't feel safe with. And this is an, an inch and a quarter. Uh, so I use Great Plains medium sized motor mount uh, and just cut it down with my Dremel. Um, still need some additional bolts here, but again, it was just fitting everything to place. And that's when this was protruding out and I realized that it was rubbing on the cowl and it had to enlarge that. So now we're here. How do we affix the cowl to the airplane? I traced out these and cut these out and f ended up having to trim them a few more times to get them to fit the inner lip of the cowl because the cowl is ridiculously thick. This is a really robust piece of fiberglass and unfortunately it also weighs a ton. So all of that being said, between all of the ply that's up here, uh, down below and above the front and this and this and the metal and the metal, we're already looking like we're a little bit nose heavy. Now granted, I don't have the tail built up yet. I also don't have any of the metal struts that are gonna go back there. But there may be a situation where I may have to install the batteries here you know, I'm going to I'm going to make a hatch that sort of opens like this in the cowl, but the batteries are probably going to have to slip in and then butt up right against here to get the center of gravity to sort of move backward as we have a center of gravity mark right here. Yeah, it, it's already looking a little nose heavy. So that's where we are. It's long and convoluted, but now moving forward. Moving forward, oh, this is so ugly. <laughs> um, so peeling off the, the, the covering, you know, we've got these holes. This sheeting is not very secure. There's these huge gaps that are just ugly and sort of filled with maybe Gorilla Glue, maybe epoxy, it's, it's horrible. And then there's these pieces that have been filled to get, I mean, there's just, it's not great and it's just as not great on this side where we've got a piece of wood entirely missing. Uh, so clearly at some point this was either crashed or recovered or something, but I want to see what's under here. And not to mention, because this cowl is not meant for this kit, it doesn't align with this wood. So, I want to peel all of this garbage sheeting off and I'm going to essentially resheet from this line all the way around, all the way up to where it meets the new cowl. So we'll have a little battery uh, access hatch that'll open up you know, from about here. So we'll have room to install our batteries, but all of this is going to be sheeted up to here and the angle is going to be a little bit different because the cow is a little bit rounder. I actually like the shape a little bit better having seen Patrick's airplane uh, up close in person as well as looking at reference pictures. I know that this shape is a little bit more accurate than this one. This one seems pretty square overall uh, as opposed to that which is a little bit narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. So We've got some work cut out for us uh, to resheet all of this stuff. You know, these these ply formers, you know, this is up to the firewall, extends all the way back here and same for right here. So we're not going to be cutting into anything structural at all. This is just cosmetic and it's going to look a million times better. It's more work, but it has to be done. And this is something that was unexpected, but it's it's necessary. So needless to say, I'm being a little long winded today, but the whole reason that I did not take any video of any of this is to troubleshoot and customize this model the way that it needed to be done was just, it was, you know, an hour here, two hours there, and it all added up and it was very slow progress. So it's just not gonna make great content. That's why I'm doing an update the way this is. Uh, and I'm informing you guys of that process because 
it's, it's just not good content because you're just looking at me, stare at it, take measurements, cut something, fit it. And that's really not entertaining. That's just sort of like, ah, look at that guy mess up. Uh, when really it's not, it's, it's troubleshooting. Um, it, that's the nature of craftsmanship. And um, frankly, I, I'm, I'm happy with this outcome. It was a lot of work to get here. It's probably at least 12 hours in that front end in work alone. Uh, just because it was so complicated, lots of different measuring, measuring, you know, four times to make sure I got it right. Uh, letting things cure, letting epoxy cure, uh, you know, the, the sandwiching the two firewall plates together to make sure that was cure and strong. You know, so much of this uh, hinges on that front end and I wanted to make sure that it was right and so that it would last a long time and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So that's where we are. Sorry for a lot of rambling. I really do apologize, but I'm glad you stopped by today to see the progress. I am making progress on the TriPacer. It's coming along great. I'm gonna get going on the tail for good and I'm gonna get this uh, front end sheeted and we're gonna be in a much better place to do some recovering and move on from there. So until next time, guys, continue also troubleshooting and working on your flying works of art.